Hello everyone, Ashley D. Will here, author, teacher, life coach. So I hope everyone's doing well. You guys please remember to like, subscribe, and share. And today we're going to do a video for which I got a request. And the request was, please do a part two to the working, resting, laziness video. So I'm doing this for that request. So let's go over part two of working, resting, and laziness. Okay, so there are three types of hearts in the apparent body of Christ. And there are lots of different types of believers, lots of different types of Christians. And as you know, and as the scripture says, everyone that calls themselves a Christian is really not a believer. They're really not a believer, and there's so many reasons why they're not. But let's just look at a fraction of that issue in the body and understand that there are those who work. There are those who rest. And there are those who are lazy. Okay, the scripture is very clear about this. And so I wanted to give more detail and some examples uh, for the request, the one who requested this video to make it more clear and more uh, understandable, this topic. So in the original uh, Working, Resting, Laziness Part 1, we talked about how those who are working hard for God, that that is flesh. Those who are lazy, that that is flesh. And that those who are resting in Christ, that this is the spirit of the living God. So I want to make that clear and remind you about that before we start. Okay, so let's look at some of these um, descriptions and different sayings that they say. Okay, so let's look at those who work hard in the faith. Okay? They are using self-effort to fuel their Christian walk. They're the fuel, they're the motivation, they are doing it themselves. There is little or no faith because they don't need faith at all or their faith is in themselves. And they are working out of the self. They're working out of themselves. That's the work that's being done. It's not the work of the Holy Spirit, it's their work. Some things they may have that they may say to themselves, or it could be a subconscious message that is buried in their soul that's driving them to do this, is I have to work hard. I have to work very hard for God so he'll know I'm serious. Or I have to work really hard so the Lord won't think I'm lazy. Or in my mind, I'm comparing myself to these other people out there and I'm trying to work harder than they work. I'm in a competition with my siblings or my uh, other people out there in my field or there's some phantom in my mind that I'm competing with from wounding in my past and I'm working really hard to impress God so that he'll think I'm great. I'm definitely in compulsion. It's an OCD workaholism energy and that's what's underneath the mask. It's all about what other people think about me and my imagination of what God will think of me. But this person is superficial. They don't know the Lord very well and they don't have a deep understanding of the scriptures. So they're focused on what other people think. They're focused on competing and performing and they imagine that God is saying these things, but he doesn't. They're very independent from the Lord their self is very strong. Their ego is very strong. Their pride is very strong. They are either not in the yoke at all or sloppily in and out maybe a quarter or a third of the time. They, they're deceiving themselves because they think they're in the yoke, but they're not. They're in their own yoke. They love to check boxes. Let's do this. Let's do that. We have to keep up appearances. Let's um, do whatever we can to make us look good. 
That's, that's their motive. They're led by themselves and they're really into performance. That is someone who is very superficial and shallow, who is into performance and competition. Okay. These um, types are typically the Laodicean church people. They are lukewarm. There's no fire for God. And there's no power in their lives. There's no Holy Spirit power. There's a lot of formalities and a lot of that. But there's no power, Holy Spirit power. That's what's missing. And the Holy Spirit fruit is missing. Um, their burden is heavy because they're doing all the work. So they have a heavy burden. And their idols are self. I must perform for God because I have to impress him and make him think I'm great. And then other people, what will other people think of me? Oh, I better do these things so I can appear wonderful to them so they'll come and worship me. Okay, this is the flesh in action. And that is the working person slash heart. I can put one more label on here. This would be kin to legalism this would be kin to license and this would be grace okay so we've done the working part the working type of believer they operate out of the flesh and that is all about them let's go to the other end of the spectrum mind you this is still flesh okay Flesh. This is more like license. The lazy believer has a cold heart. They really don't care. They are into self-indulgence. They're going to do what they want to do. They don't have faith, and there are no works in their lives. Okay? No faith, no works, self-indulgence. Things they say, and what's in their heart is... God's grace covers everything. You don't have to really do anything. You just believe and you're saved and that's it. They say to a lot of things, I'll do it later. Maybe later. Yeah, I'll do it later. And they also say, well, it, after all, it is my life, right? I get to decide what I do. Those are very dangerous things to say. What do I think? Over here, it was, what do others think? But here is, what do I think? Lots of excuses. Well, I sprained my knee, or I have to move, or I got a cold, or um, I just want to sit on the uh, sofa and watch my movies and eat my donuts. That's what I really want to do. And lots of excuses. There's no yoke life. There has been no surrender and no submission. Likewise, over here, they may have surrendered or submitted a little bit at one point, but they can't stay there. They have to go back to working hard. So this is very deceptive. Um, the idolatry would be self, pleasure, indulgence. What makes me feel good, right? That's their goal is to feel good and not to experience any discomfort or any um, spiritual growth, which can involve discomfort, pain, and suffering to move forward. They're like, oh, I will never do that. That's not me. They rely on other people always for their so-called relationship with God, which really doesn't exist. They're living vicariously through these hireling pastors out there, and they don't have their own relationship with the Lord and they don't seek they don't ask they don't knock that's not them they don't do that why because they're all about the self okay their burden is they have no burden or they have the burden of self-indulgence you could say and the idol is the self and the idol is pleasure and the idol is Whatever makes me feel good and keeps my ears tickled, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, again, this is flesh. Let's go to the middle row 
and look at what the Holy Spirit does and what he's all about and what you can recognize in other people that you will know is the Holy Spirit. This believer is hot. Usually they can get warm, but they're always trying to move back to being hot. And the more you rest and get to know the Lord of the Sabbath rest, the hotter you're going to be. So the worker is into self-effort. The lazy is into self-indulgence. The one who's resting is into self-sacrifice. And that means that their life has been thrown away. Their self-life and their trying to work hard has been thrown away. They have given up everything to follow the Lord. In fact, many of them could have been crucified. Crucified. They have crucified their own life and decided to follow Christ. So that is self-sacrifice. In self-sacrifice, you don't have to do anything. You want to do things. You want to follow Christ. You honestly don't want your own life back anymore. This is one who has a heart that is full of faith because this person has gotten out of the way. They used to be maybe over here, but they said, no, I'm crucifying myself. I'm throwing my life away and I'm going to come over here. The works that are going on are the Lord's works, the Holy Spirit's works. And so in this life, over time, you will see fruit of the Holy Spirit. James 2.26 says, faith without works is dead. Well, this person has faith and works, but the works are not their own works. The works are the works of the Holy Spirit. And in fact, they would rather have no works at all if any of the work has to be of themselves. They will look to the Lord, follow the Lord, trust the Lord that he's doing his work in their lives. And that is what they do. Hebrews 4.10 says the true believers have left their own works of righteousness behind. They have crucified those own work, their own works of righteousness. Unlike these who are working in and of themselves trying to perform righteousness, but it's really self-righteousness over here. Self-righteousness. Let's write that down. So self-righteousness is over here. This is no righteousness. And this is Christ's righteousness. I hope this is becoming more and more clear to you because you need to see this. And if you're over here, you want to move to the middle. If you're over here, you want to move to the middle. Don't be found on either side here. Another huge, huge, huge feature of a believer's heart that is resting in Christ and resting in the finished work of the cross, it is finished, is that they always say to themselves all day and all night, and this is really a flow, a meditation flow of their heart, without you, Lord, I can do nothing. Without you, Lord, I can do nothing. And that alone, if your parts of you are hanging out over here, will help move you over here. Because the more that it's you, the more wood hand stubble you're piling up. So, Lord, without you, I can do nothing. So why would I want to stay over here working in self-effort and have no result and no fruit from it? That is foolish and dangerous. Without you, I can do nothing because you're my life source. You are my life source, my life director. You are my whole life, and I will wait on you, and I will trust in you, and I will follow you. Another huge point of one who is resting in the it is finished rest of Christ is abiding. Abiding basically means hanging out. Where do you dwell? Where do you stay? Where do you abide? Where do you hang out? Where do you live? 
Well, that's what abiding means. Where do you live? Where do you hang out? And when you're abiding in Christ, you're resting in his finished work. It is finished. And your heart says, I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. Even if my house burns down to the ground, I trust you, Lord. Even if my husband runs away with another woman, I trust you, Lord. Even if I'm in a car wreck and I'm a quadriplegic, I trust you, Lord. It doesn't feel in these circumstances like I want to trust you, but deep in my heart, I'm choosing to trust you. So they say a lot, I trust you, Lord. They are humble. Let's add humble here. They are humble and they are dependent on the Lord because they know that the Lord is their life source. See, if you think you're your life source, you won't depend on the Lord. But when you really get it and it drops from your head down into your heart that you are a mere, needy, helpless branch and that the Lord is the big, all-sufficient vine, then you take your little branch and you plug it into the vine and you keep it there forever and you never let go because he is the life source. He is the only life. John 14, 6, I am the life, Jesus Christ said. So next in the resting heart is um, they are focused on what he, the Lord Jesus Christ, thinks and says and commands. That's what they're focused on, what he thinks. See, this is God-centered. This is God-centered. Over here, they're focused on what others think. And over here, they're focused on what they think. See? So this is what he thinks. I'm looking to the Lord because he's the good shepherd and I'm not. I'm just a helpless sheep. I'm looking at what he thinks because he's the vine and I'm a branch. I'm looking at what he thinks because he's God Almighty and I'm not. These types do not mind waiting on the Lord. If there doesn't seem like there's much going on in their lives and they see other people working hard over here, they don't look at the other people and go, oh, I better get busy working so God won't think I'm lazy. They say, no, I'm not going to join that group. I'm going to stay here and I'm going to trust the Lord and I'm going to wait on him in his perfect timing, not my timing, not the world's timing, and I'm going to wait for him to direct me as to where I should go. Whichever way it is, he's going to show me in his perfect timing. So they're into God's perfect timing and they know that that is not the world's timing or their timing and thus they're willing to wait on that timing. Another feature of those who are resting is the yoke life. Being in the yoke of Jesus Christ, Matthew 11, 28 through 30, is their priority. The whole priority of their life, if you wanted to sum up everything, you could say that the priority of their whole life is to walk in that yoke with Jesus Christ every day. No matter what's happening in the circumstances, no matter if you are married or not, if you just had an argument or not, if you're sick or well, if you're rich or poor or you go bankrupt, if you get the flu, it doesn't matter. Circumstances can be whatever, but it doesn't matter. Their whole focus of their life is to walk in a yoke with the Lord Jesus Christ and to be found living Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30. They're also very much into surrender every morning, every afternoon, every evening, and submitting to the Lord because they're in the yoke. They have surrendered. And in the yoke, they're learning more and more submission, submission, submission. The more they're submitting, the more that fruit is going to grow in their lives. Because when they're submitting, they've gotten out of the way, unlike these guys. And so the Lord is getting, increasing more and more, and the Lord's fruit is going to be in their lives. And that will prove that they belong to Him. They have trust in their heart. 
They may go through seasons of struggle, but that's okay. The Holy Spirit's always ministering to them. And because they trust the Lord, they often have a significant level of God's peace in their hearts because God gives you his peace when you trust him. Like I alluded to a moment ago, this person who is in the rest of Christ, resting from their own works of righteousness, resting in the finality of the cross, it is finished, Christ said, they are continually decreasing. And the more they decrease, the more they can rest. And the more they rest, the more they can decrease. And the more they decrease, the more they can rest. And as this is going on, what is growing? The fruit of the Holy Spirit in their lives. They may not even see it or know it or recognize it, but other people can spot it if you have eyes to see. So they are decreasing gladly. Remember, they've thrown away their lives. They don't want their life anymore. They're listening and following, and they're letting and wanting the Lord to increase in their lives. Take over my whole life. Take over my reputation. Take over my plans. Take over my relationships. Fill up my whole heart with you, Lord. I don't want any area in my heart or soul that is not filled with you. And I want your plans and your will no matter what. And throughout the day and as they're falling asleep at night and when they're in the shower, sitting in traffic or working on a project, they're always listening. Listening for the Good Shepherd's voice or listening for a leading of the heart or a prompting of the heart. And more and more and more, they are following when they hear. They're following along because these are the true sheep. These are not the true sheep, and these are not the true sheep. And so we'll see one day the sheep and the goats are going to be separated. Okay, so these will be found pleasing to the Lord. This is the work of the Holy Spirit, all of this. This is flesh, and this is flesh. What did we leave out? Oh, uh, these don't have any idols or, depending on where they are in their growth, the Lord is spotting and, and highlighting idols to them. And they're going, oh, and they may have to grieve and wail or journal or get some healing. But they are willing to let idols fall by the wayside. Because there's this beautiful current that is flowing through them from the throne room of God. This Holy Spirit current is flowing through them. And that current is pulling out and purging and cleansing everything that is not of God. And it flows through them and they say, yes, take that away. And their desires are changing. And that river is also bringing in the good things into their lives, bringing in the blessings from God. And so it's washing out the old and it's bringing in the new. And these people are being transformed into the image of Christ. Slowly, daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, by decade, there are changes, significant changes. They're very significant to God. And there may be even some huge breakthroughs and breakaways from old habits. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. So these are the true sons of God here. These are posers and these are worthless, the scripture says. Lots of Pharisees will be over here. Lots of leaders will be over here. Um, so I hope that is good enough for what you were asking for, the person who requ requested this video. Let me move out of the way in case anyone wants to copy the board. Okay, so I hope that's helpful. You guys are welcome to leave comments or questions, or if you want me to do a part three and tell you something else about it, I'll be glad to do that. But um, you can also email me at ashleydwillgmail and we can converse there. Okay, so you guys have a blessed day and I pray that you will learn to rest in the Lord and let his works be manifest through you. That's my prayer in Jesus name. So you guys have a blessed day. I'll see you next time.